So, wow. Bob, thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's good to be in Austin, Austin, Texas. Almost a hometown. Yes. I went to college here in the University of Texas, yeah. and I grew up down here. As you well know, I as arrived I in the Northwest by a submarine. <laughs> and so, you know, probably never would have occurred to me, actually, to live up in Seattle had I not gotten there via the Navy. You're still there, though. You're still I'm still there. But I might move back you know, one yeah. of these days. I have a lot of friends down here. So. so how vibrant do you think Austin is from the technology perspective? It's super vibrant. It's, um, you know, I've watched Austin over the years doing two steps forward and one step back when it comes okay. to technology. Oh, yeah. This, when I went to school, because I'm older than dirt, here it was, Austin was kind of a college town slash government town, the state capital. So most people here were in government or they're going to University of Texas. Okay. And that was, it was about 50,000 students back then. So big school. And um, I remember in the late 90s, like the dot-com thing, Austin kind of had a little bit of a surge. And then when the crash happened, it just collapsed. In fact, there were half-built skyscrapers that where they just stopped building because the money was gone. It was like a kind of a yeah, gold yeah, rush yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It actually happened in Bellevue, Washington, too, in early 2000. There were some half-built buildings in Bellevue. Yeah, true. Sure. Um, and so, but... This research, and then you start, you know, I remember, you know, Samsung opened a facility here, Motorola, then Apple, and then yeah, one yeah. by one. And it was really more manufacturing of computer type stuff. Uh -huh. Obviously, Dell is where it all started here. But Michael Dell going to the University of Texas, yeah, yeah. building computers in his dorm room for people <laughs> to order. Crazy, right? Crazy. Crazy. But, you know, you got to start somewhere. It's yeah, entrepreneurial. Yeah, totally. It seems like it's holding now onto mm -hmm. this tech stuff. Um, so many people are moving here. A lot of people moving from California. You see the price of, like, from California or past the Northwest. Real estate here is ridiculous. It is. It is. It used to be cheap. Here. Cheap. Because Texas was always cheap. Yeah. Yeah. You true. know, obviously Houston's really cheap. Yeah. <laughs> but Austin's hip and it's cool. Yeah. Because there's more to Austin than just being a cool tech place. Yeah. I mean, you see all the bars, all the music, all the it's life. It's it's like, life so, you know what? If you really want to enjoy life, and it's not just for young people. I was about to say, you know, if you're a young person and you want to go hang out at bars, it's for all of us. And so there is so much to do. There's so much action and nightlife. I love it's, it. It's awesome. Yeah. So one of the action is the Edge AI Foundation right. event. Yeah. And you were at the panel today. Yeah. So tell me a bit about this panel. It was totally ridiculous and absurd because I was involved, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we had someone really... Do like, take you seriously, though. Some had a serious person and... Some questions and I said, like, you know, what's going on with Edge AI? And, yeah, yeah. You know, he was worried about, hey, is it going to suffer the same fate as IoT? You know, <laughs> because I think of IoT was a drawer, a box full of cables and stuff, and we really didn't know what to do with that. And we obviously didn't position it right or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, I want to make sure that Edge AI doesn't suffer the same fate, which it could. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, you know, what, and you, know, you and I learned a lot of lessons from what worked and what didn't in IoT, you know, it was like, well, people have just built products like the Ring doorbell or the yeah. Nest thermostat and didn't talk about IoT or connected anything. It was just, here's this cool thing and it does this yeah, function yeah. for you. People want it. I go, think about the outcome. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about the tech. It's like here at this event, you can all geek out and talk to each other. Yeah. But when it comes to talking to customers and positioning your product, don't do it. You know, we thought at IoT, we thought, oh, we'll build this mega platform in the cloud and everyone's going to use it. Yeah. Well, they didn't want to use it. Well, not just us, actually. Everyone tried to build an IoT platform. Yes. No one tried to build an IoT solution or right. an actual vertical application. Right. 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 We're all selling our platform. You can build your solution. Customers like, give me the solution. Give me the application. And then the companies that did have successful products in yeah. the end, they didn't use us. They built their own thing. In every case, they built their own. Because you know what? All right, here's the secret, kids. All right. The cloud stuff that we built and that any of us built is the easy part. I know people think, oh, it's the cloud, or it's what we did was we built middleware. Yeah. yeah. And we let a bunch of things connect to it. Yeah. And we capture data in a message queue called IoT Hub. And we grab it and we go to a database or we do some analytics. That is actually the easiest part. Yeah. It turns out all along, the hard part was your specialty embedded development. Yeah, that's the hard part. That's the hard part. 
such a small group of people yeah, who yeah. know how to do that. Yeah. Lots yeah. of people can move databases and connect and put a connection string and send data somewhere. Yeah. Big sure. deal. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Interestingly, what I'm saying as well is that AI, Gen AI, but AI at the edge mostly. Yeah will force people to think more about distribution of intelligence. Yeah. Yes, it will be some AI on the edge device, on the tiny device down there, on the embedded software. Right. We talked a lot about that here. Yeah. Then it's going to be bigger AI running on a local gateway or a racket yeah. servers, right? Yeah. And you can have these kind of infrastructures where players like Microsoft might come back, you know, right. in force yeah. Yeah. because they know how to deal with servers. They know how to deal with software right. stats on that server. So right. And now, and now you're looking at you know, the intelligence being distributed, embedded guys doing embedded, AI guys doing both edge AI and AI yeah. on the server and AI yeah. on and, and the cloud. And it's actually. Yeah, you got great companies here like Edge Impulse that have some great tooling to do stuff yeah, yeah. on microcontrollers. I personally, we've talked about this. I've used ML.net from Microsoft yeah. on yeah. laptops or kind of the edge gateway-ish yeah. type yeah. thing. Yeah. It's great. It yeah. does all the different types of yeah. ML that I wanted I, to do. I tried that on the Wilderness Labs Meadow. Oh, wow. It works. Awesome. Yes. So you want to do some work with that? Oh, yeah. That's .net. great. Yeah, it's .NET, right? It's open source. It's cross-platform. Yeah. It's .NET. It's something everybody knows. Yeah. And so you're right. You can see the, the tiny, the medium, the bigger. Yeah. yeah. Going back to the cloud. Yeah. Orchestration is going to be the, the challenge. Right? Yeah. So you, how do you make all these little tiny brains talk together, yeah. exchange information? Well, there's something called IoT. Oh, it used to be called machine to machine. Oh, no. What? 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 <laughs> you know, in fact, the rise of just edge computing in general in the past. Yeah. When people would ask me, what's the biggest headache or the problem? And I always, it was just what you said, orchestration. Yeah. When you did just cloud only, you had this big hub and spoke. Everybody pointed at this one place. Yeah, yeah. But with the edge, all of a sudden you have distributed nodes and yeah. it's crazy. And so orchestrating that is yeah. hard. It's more complex. Yeah. Do you remember the Robotics Studio? The which one? Microsoft Robotics Studio. Yes, yes. So the two components were? Was that the? Like yeah. there was the DSS and the CCR. Concurrency, CRR, concurrency runtime. Right. Right. right, right. And right. the decentralized service that was about orchestration. And so Robotic. this, like, robotics is telling us how to do it. Oh, yeah. Right? When you think about it, robotics is about, you know, autonomous systems right. and a bunch of nodes communicating with each other Absolutely. and sharing the brain, right? Absolutely. So we, we might want to revive the price of robotics. It seems like we dove into a lot of things deeply at Microsoft and then we just kind of give up and quit. Yeah. Sometimes, I, like the robotics. I talked to Tandy Trower last year or so. Yeah. He's still doing robotics. Really? Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. So we might hear from him. And what was the really tiny version of Compact Framework or the .NET Framework? The, not a mic micro framework? Yeah. Yeah. Remember yeah, yeah. that? Because that was part of the game. Yeah, yeah totally. And so actually, if you, I was talking about Wilderness Labs. Yeah. So they basically picked up where Mike Framework left it. Right? Okay. All right. And they have a very interesting solution that runs .NET directly on silicon. The difference is that Mike Framework was a subset of .NET. Yeah. Meadow is full .NET standard one too. That's amazing. So you can run full .NET libraries on oh, microcontrollers. Oh, microcontroller, that's amazing. People, I bet people still don't believe that. It's get it right out. It's marketing it's, all again. The only thing though is that you have to be conscious of the fact you have limited resources. Yeah. When you do .NET development for the cloud, you don't care. You don't care. Right. Right. You don't care that there's a garbage collector and that maybe a resource will be deallocated. Right. When you run on a natural piece of hardware. You have limited resources, you allocate objects, yeah, and then suddenly you run out of memory. It's right. Like, what? what happened? Right? What happened? But you know, but if you have things like MicroPython and CircuitPython running on microcontrollers, why not dot .NET? You yeah. know? Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Totally. Well, uh -huh. a memory collection could blow out the memory on a device. And we were living in the CE world, a deterministic real-time yeah, OS, yeah. and yeah. we had to control that memory thing. Well, yeah, we had to be conscious of what you're allocating or deallocating or whatever. Yeah. Right? Totally. To collect some garbage. Exactly. And this is where you were conscious about, like, is that variable global or local or yeah. what's the scope of it? Yeah. Whatever. Absolutely. So, yeah, Absolutely. definitely. Like, this is Stephanie. She's crazy. Like, she's crazy. Yeah. And she's smarter than everybody. So, yeah. I'll keep her around. Right? So, a little word about your feeling about the event when you arrived today. Yeah. Like, you started talking to people. It's been, what's the feeling? What's there's the feeling? a lot of good energy. I've been talking to a lot of people. A lot of people I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, 
it felt like the early days of IoT, actually. Yeah, really? The kind of excitement. They're all excited. They are. They're geeking out. They're excited about the future. Um, and I think it's up to some of us who've been to a few rodeos to try to help make sure that they have a better outcome than we did with IoT. Definitely. You know what I mean? Because yep. I remember that time of being so yep. excited. Um, but you know what? I hate to say it. To bash IoT. I'm not going to bash it. I've never, there was never a more exciting time for me, though, than being a part of the smartphone revolution. That was a much bigger deal than IoT. That was. Because IoT actually never took off for us at Microsoft. But the smartphone yeah. thing, we learned a lot. Yeah. But we were part of a revolution that changed the world. Yeah, yeah sure. Because when you talk about products or things that do I have to convince someone to like this product? Do I have to do a lot of marketing? The smartphone thing, people instantly go, this is the one thing I want more than anything in my life. Yes. Yeah. That's something people should think about when they're building their products here with Edge AI. Yeah. yeah. Think about that smartphone where people are like, oh, I've got to have it. Yeah. Does your product evoke that kind of feeling? Interestingly, to me, smartphone has been an evolution. You know, we, we had seen like we started to see laptops with touch screens. Touch was the big thing, right? Yeah. I remember speeches right. from, from uh, you know, like Apple guys saying, we have multi-touch, big deal. Right. We're just like in the Windows phone, seems like, what do you mean big deal? We have that. We've, we've, got, got, we've got Windows CE had like 10, yeah. 10 touch, yeah. right? 10 points. And, uh, but yeah, you, you, you're right. You need to think about this angle and maybe not the revolutionary idea, yeah. but the one that will really produce right. something, right. you know, help, support, yeah, you know, being the right tool for the right time. Absolutely. Like, um, like you always hear people, the biggest thing in tech that's happened in the 21st century is the cloud. I'm like, no, it's a smartphone by a mile, by far. Yeah. The most successful product in the history of products is the iPhone. Yeah. Two trillions have been made yeah, off of that true. one product. Sure. It's crazy, you know? It is and crazy. So, and so that's where all these would-be developers trying to build a product yeah. They need to think about that. And when they talk to customers and get that feedback, yeah. or the customer, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Or are they like passionate about it? It's like, I've got to have this for my business or my whatever. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Awesome. Fun stuff. Well, thanks for stopping by, man. It's great to be here. Good to have you, as always. Absolutely. Well, everyone, stay tuned. We have more. Hey, and go visit Bucky's when you're in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> that's my shirt. 